Hey, it's Natalie Callback with Gwen Lafleur for Creative Jumpstart 2019. Hi, Gwen. <laughs> so wonderful to have Gwen back uh, again this year. I think this might be the third or fourth time. Fourth. Yay! How cool is that? Yeah. I love Gwen's work. Um, she's really cool. But let her tell you a little bit herself uh, about herself and her artwork. So I, I've been calling my artwork boho grunge lately because it's kind of boho and it's pretty grungy. So I thought, why not mix them together? But it's, uh, for me, it's just a, it's become kind of a reflection of my travels and all the places I go. I love to travel. I try to do a trip every year, every two years, do something really cool. And lately I've been very much in Asia and the Middle East. And so that's really where I think this kind of bohemian vibe has sort of taken over <laughs> and um the grungy part for me seems to to it kind of represents more of the traditional the history the um the very old-fashioned part of me the upbringing so it's it's kind of a dichotomy because I'm I am a fairly bohemian person but I'm also pretty grounded pretty traditional and so it's two things that don't normally go together and you really see that in my artwork as well. And somehow I think they work for me with my own personality and they seem to work in my artwork and so it's a very reflection of who I am. That's so cool. Um, yeah. I love that you put that together. Yeah, um, I want to come back to your travels uh, in a couple yeah. minutes again too, because it's so cool. But um, let's first talk about, so this year's theme of Creative Jumpstart is My Home is My Castle. Yeah. And um, for those of you who don't know that, I always send the artist um, a short kind of theme. It's not really, um, you know, like there's not a lot of uh, restrictions or whatever. It's I explain a little bit how what I mean about it with it or what I can envision. And so um, what does home mean to you personally? Because you were born in D.C., as I understand, and then you're now living in uh, Utah, right? I was actually born in Denver, but ah. I was um, I, I was raised in D.C. and lived there for most of the, the growing up years. My whole family is still in D.C. It's interesting. For, for me, home is more about the people. And it's so my family, um, good friends, that kind of thing. And so for me, home is still very much... Uh, DC, the East Coast, because that is where mm. most of the people the closest to are at right now. So I go back as I get and just keep in close contact with, with everybody there. And then I, I try to spend as much time as I like, going back to see my family. So mm -hmm. Utah's thing. Um, and it's, I'm comfortable here, but I always feel like a visitor if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of an interesting perspective for me at some point I will probably end up moving back east again mm -hmm. just because I think I am and always be an east coast girl so <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I totally understand that uh given that yeah. I'm coming from Germany so, so you know I do love living here yeah. and um but there is something when you're I, I think it's interesting that you say that because you're you're in the same country but yet the uh -huh. states are so big and so Diver like different and diverse in yeah. all their states and everything, um, yeah. which I think a lot of Europeans or uh, you know the rest of the world might not really uh, grasp. Although we European have the have the same thing. I mean, we have all these like little countries, and you you go like an hour, mm -hmm. you're in a different country, and you're like, this is not yeah. my home. You know, <laughs> like it's cool, <laughs> but it's not my home. So I get yeah. it. <laughs> so. Um, so what, if that's not too personal, what brought you to uh, Utah? Um, which time? <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, three times. The first time I moved out here to go to school, I went to BYU. Mm -hmm. And I did I did my bachelor's and master's degree, was one after another. Yeah. And then moved back. And then I ended up coming back out to Utah again for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I was here, I ended up staying and doing my MBA. And then... Um, ended up leaving and moved to Connecticut and then Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, ended up changing jobs again and had a couple of different options but the one that ended up working out was back in Utah <laughs> so 
kind of get, keep getting pulled back here. And, um, you know, it's like I've, I've lived here enough now that I'm comfortable with it, but it's, it's a very different, uh, it's a very different culture and environment for me mm-hmm. back east. So I'm, I will hear, but it's, you know, it's different. So it's an interesting, it's interesting for me to be here and yeah. um, absorb it a little bit. I love, um, I love Utah, uh, especially for its landscape. I, I mean, I've always been there for the or- national parks and I'm just always so amazed when you drive through Utah, how the landscape can change in like, 20 minutes and you're like oh my god i'm in a, a black land uh, moon landscape and then oh my god there's red rocks oh my god you know like it's just so amazing yeah right? <laughs> it is gorgeous i live it's, i'm surrounded by mountains on all all sides i live in the salt lake valley and um it's just you know i love the mountains it's just beautiful so that, that's a benefit That's that that is definitely a benefit. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a little bit harder here with the, with that, but I love living on the east coast too, so I get it. <laughs> it but I love the mountains, so yeah. <laughs> so um, you mentioned that before, and um, you have been traveling a lot, and lately I think I noticed that you. So you said you were a lot in Asia, but noticing that you are also traveling a lot to areas and countries that might be not uh, on everyone's yeah. list. So um, where are you going next? Tell us. I'm actually going to, I'm going to take a, a trip along the Silk Road. So I started in China, in Xi'an, which was the starting point for the Silk Road. And I'm going to go to uh, Urumqi and Dunhuang. And um, there's one other city in China, Western China, which I've never been to Western China. I'm very excited. And they're all different points along the Silk Road. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll learn the history of um, both like Marco Polo type stuff and then Genghis Khan. And then from China, I hop over to Kazakhstan mm-hmm. and we get on plane. And I'm on a train for another two weeks going to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Wow. Yeah, and I'll end in Ashgabat, Turkmenistan, and then fly home from there. So it's... Uh, 23 days, and it's going to be a little bit... It's places... I mean, my parents are like, I don't even... I've never even heard of those places. Yeah. I'm, I like going places that are a little bit off the beaten path and a little bit out of the norm, but I've worked myself up to it as well, so... That's pretty cool. So are you traveling alone or with a group, mm-hmm. a guided group? You travel alone? Well, I go by myself with a guided group. Yes. So... Because especially in these parts of the world, I when I'll go to Europe by myself, and yeah. that's not really a big deal. But if if I'm Middle East or something yeah. like that, as a woman, it's much safer to go alone or to go by your to go with a group. Right. But I don't, you know, I, I don't really need to travel with, but I don't want to miss out, so I just go and find a group and join up and, and go. And I usually meet people along the way that I'm right. hanging out with. I've made some good friends that way and. Um, but then I can go back to my cabin or my room and I can shut the door <laughs> and, and uh, do my introverted recharging time all by myself. So it's, you know, I call it the, the perfect introvert travel plan. So, Say it again. Sorry. Yeah, it was so broken care of everything for you. It, oh, the, the perfect, I call it the perfect introvert travel plan <laughs> because you have, You have people that take care of everything for you. There's always a group. There's somebody, you know, that you can talk to. But at the end of the day, you can close the door and you're on your own. And it's, so it works out perfectly for me. I love that. Um, my grand aunt, um, she passed away a couple of years ago. But she used to travel uh, after my uh, great uncle passed away. She used to travel, uh, like, to the, like, normal places, as I say. Uh-huh. But also, like... <laughs> like exotic, like kind of like places where people would never go to, you know, uh, or not, I would, but people that don't have that usually on their list, right? And she, yeah, I always was just so, I love, she would write postcards from everywhere and I was always excited and then I would look up where she was going and um, yeah, I think I got this kind of travel bug from her too, you know, like I want to see different countries, I want to see different things that just think it opens such a huge world for you right like i mean uh, obviously art uh, as you will uh, i'm pretty sure you can confirm right inspiration yeah. for art like what pattern colors 
oh, textures, textiles, that, that, that's a lot where the use of metallics and textiles is very, very much influenced by my travels in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can yeah. totally see that, like, uh, in your work lately, it's, it's pretty obvious, pretty cool. And also, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's good to see the world and kind of understand where people are coming mm -hmm. from um, and how, you know, the the many things that come like bring us together, but also and that are co like that we have in common, but then also some things that are different. I think that's the coolest thing about traveling, right? <laughs> it is. You, I mean, you really discover that people are people, right? Everywhere. Oh, but I think for me, the other big thing that it does is that it helps me to have gratitude and perspective. Mm -hmm. Be home, and I can turn on the faucet, and I have water that I can drink. And I don't, I don't think that most of us realize what a huge thing that is to be yes. able to have that advantage and um, to just be able to go to the store and buy a rotisserie chicken that has already been killed and cleaned and cooked. Exactly, yeah. You know, and yeah. you, know, you pay five for one at Costco, but you don't realize, you know, I can go pick up my food and it's already cooked and ready for me. And it's just, it's something, and that's why I like to go so frequently too, is to remind me and to help me to recognize all of the blessings and the and the, the conveniences and just the amazing things that I have in my life that I take for granted. So that's yeah. something for, that's really um, a great blessing about travel. That's true. That's that's uh, very true. And I also feel like, depending on where you go, if there are, are areas where, let's say, internet is restricted, or which I think when you go to oh, Turkmenistan yeah. and some of the other, yeah, right, so there's like, common issues of like free speech or whatever you know so i think that also reminds us of like what a like it's pretty amazing like uh that we that we just feel that is normal you know but in many countries it isn't <laughs> yeah and i go to places i was in russia two years ago i'll be and i was in china two years ago and i'll be in china again this year and you go to places where they say oh well it's not communist anymore or It is, but it is still very regulated, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that you really, really have to be careful about. There are things that I can't talk about. Right. As you know, when I go to China, um, you cannot get onto Facebook or Instagram while you're there. You mm -hmm. know, so there are a lot of things that um, that I think that you're definitely right, politically and socially, mm -hmm. that, we, that we also take for granted, and that's a really great reminder as well. Yeah, but then I also feel like um, sometimes when you are in these places that you also learn a lot of things that are amazing about, uh, you know, the country and the people and, and you, you're, you, you kind of, um, understand that it's, it's about the people too. And it's about yes. like, and that I feel is like the most important thing that it makes yeah. you, uh, you know, and, and there are be other beauties in these countries, you know, and, and that makes me always like, so, You know, I don't know. I just love that. I haven't been at and at in yeah. as many exotic places as you are. So I will be living through your journey. Yeah. And I think by the time we will see this interview, you will actually be back, and so people can go back and see what mm -hmm. you did and what your artwork work is going to show. I think it will be. Um, I think it's definitely going to be some influence, especially this particular trip, going along the Silk Road, yeah. where it's you know very much going to be about fabric and textiles and markets and bazaars and, and hopefully food as well. But <laughs> how many suitcases do you bring? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I bring one because you're really limited on baggage when you're flying within China. Uh... But I plan to as a, <laughs> so well, I've got onto a science after so many years. So I will, I managed to bring back a pretty good amount of stuff. You could the, probably ship some stuff. It. Could you ship some stuff? Huh? Can you ship some stuff? Oh, you can ship. I try not to. I try to put a limit somewhere. <laughs> But uh, um, there are things, you know, there are things like you throw away, like take old clothes that you don't want anymore, and then you throw them away as you go, and it opens up space and weight in your suitcase. Yeah. You bags, you, you know, and it helps you to understand, too, what's the bare minimum that you really need. I know. And, You, you don't need as much as you think you do. And so that's another, you know, that's another good. I always come home from these trips and look around in my house and go, I have way too much stuff. So, yeah. 
Totally, uh, which always reminds me of, uh, it's not the same, but when we moved from Germany to America, we had everything in this like 40 foot container or 30 foot container. And we, you know, we got rid of a lot of stuff, but then the container was all on sea for like four or six uh, weeks. And uh, we lived in our apartment here um, with, you know, folding chair yeah. to uh, folding chairs, a table, I think we had like two plates, uh -huh. two two um, spoons, whatever. Uh, everything very, very limited. And I think we came with in total six suitcases, which is a lot. Um, but that was mm -hmm. basically what we had in that moment. And when we got our stuff back, we were so overwhelmed. Because yeah. we were able to cope really, really well. And we got so yeah. used to it. And then when all the stuff came in, we were like, holy cow, we could have gotten rid of way more stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, how we tend to accumulate things and then you, you really don't need them, but I think it's a very habitual thing. And I think it's also, to some degree, it's a very American thing mm. that we accumulate just stuff and, and don't even think about it, just take for granted that we can and that we have the space for it, especially out here where our real estate prices are so much low. So I have a lot more room for you know a fairly low rent so I, I i tend to expand to fit my space which is really a bad thing but that's what, exactly on. what my husband always says which is so funny because he's american and he moved to germany with like a backpack or whatever right <laughs> and he said he realized that you like it doesn't matter how much space you have you will always just f you will just fill it same thing yeah. And, and he was like so amazed that when we, I mean, of course, then we moved also together, but that he had so much more than he actually came over with, right? From a backpack to a full apartment in Germany, yeah. you know? So it's it's kind of funny that we are like, okay, we need to, we need to fill this. <laughs> it's like some compulsion or something. I'm trying to fight it and I'm losing, but I'm still trying. <laughs> So I have to ask this question um, to uh, Mary Beth Shaw, and I just it just popped back to me, and I thought I'm going to ask you now because you said you throw uh, stuff away as you go along on your trip, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you bring, or if you even feel the need for it on your travels? Because you know you're going like what 22 days? You said I think or 21 days. 20, 20, 23. 23 days. Yeah. Is there anything you bring that will make you feel at home? Um, I bring my travel journal. And I'll bring just a very basic, it's another, I, you know, I've really gotten it down to the science at this point. I have a kit of things that I bring with me. But I think that connection to art, even while I'm on the road, is one of the things that helps me to feel at home. Mm -hmm. Because I, that passion that I can bring with me wherever I go. And that makes, so, you know, I'm sitting in a cabin on a train or in a hotel room or, you know, wherever I am. And I have that ability to have that connection to something that I love regardless mm -hmm. of where I am. And so, and, you know, art transcends all boundaries, right? So yeah. That's some, that, it, that it really works and helps to connect me to any place that I'm, that I'm visiting. What I also want to ask that is not, that's, I have also something that just popped to my mind. When I was in Japan, I went to a couple, uh, this year I went to a couple of museums and I was just so amazed how different, of course, the museums are. Because there's, um, if you're in Asia, all of a sudden you're exposed to a very different kind of art and and also, but then also, of course, I was in a modern art uh, museum too and um, there were some connections, of course, but you're like, like, you have these like star exhibition you're like i've never heard of this person you know and yeah so but do you go to museums if you can and how do you feel um like how different it is to what you're exposed to in the united states uh i go every chance i get and when i've traveled with my family i have dragged them to many many museums sometimes kicking and screaming <laughs> <laughs> And I think it, it really depends on where you're at. Like if we, when we're in Europe and we go to the museums there, it's very, very similar to the right. museum thing. Like if our Smithsonian or the Met or, uh, you know, the galleries that we have here in the States, um, 
Asia is a little bit different, and I haven't had a chance to like to the modern that you visited in Japan. But some of the places that I've gone are more. You get a lot more of um, religion, mm-hmm. history, culture. Um, I went to a museum in Vietnam that was uh, outdoor and had a lot of of like the hill tribe dwellings hmm. and seeing the carvings that they put on their homes and what they represent and when and how they're used. They had their funeral carvings and um, really interesting things like that. It, um, in Mongolia, in Ulaanbaatar, one of the one of my favorite museums I've ever been to was the Chodama Temple. Mm-hmm. And it was all of these Buddhist costumes and masks and statues and wall hangings temple. Uh, and it was Tantric Buddhism, so it was a little bit interesting. <laughs> but it was some of the most inspiring things that I've ever seen, were just these masks and understanding the statues and the ways that they're used. And then after that, we got to go to a concert where they did a folk show where they showed you some of the, uh, the ways that the costumes are worn and how they would be incorporated. Mm-hmm. Into their- and so you get a, a very different perspective. And I think it, um, it's really banded my horizons mm-hmm. as to what art and, um, just, I, I, it's just a different perspective and a different way of looking at the world. And so, yeah, every chance I get, a museum of whatever kind it is. Um, I like to go and see and to understand, uh, to, to see more about the culture and what's important right. to them. Um, I also think it's so interesting because there are, uh, we are grown up with, with of course our own culture. And I mean, yes, uh, European and American culture is different, but also very similar in lots of yeah. aspects. But even if I go to a museum, like let's say I go to MoMA and I went to MoMA one time with, uh, Julie Pfeiffer and Balzer, and there was uh, actually a German artist, Sigmar Polka, and uh, I would look at it and had a, a like a, I would get all those uh, cultural references, which in some of his artwork was uh, referring to the former Eastern part, and you know, mm. but when you don't have this, and I had the same thing, I went with a friend and we saw Lawrence uh, and his migration art, uh, you know, of. Um, African Americans, um, and it was like you know I didn't even get the reference because I didn't really know him back then, and I was like, oh yeah, um, yeah. these are cool, cool paintings. But it reduces you to a different way of looking at art. I feel like you're not mm-hmm. you're not having the whole story there, so you start looking at artwork a little bit differently. You look more at what kind of material. I feel for me, like you look yeah. more of like materials, colors. You you kind of reduce the color to its like like um, basics. I feel like. Do you feel the same? I think so, and. Um... I, I, especially in cases where I don't have somebody there to explain the references, that it does become very much about the materials and what are you seeing and and just the visual aspect of it. And then if you do, a lot of times I'm very lucky when I do these trips that I mm-hmm. have somebody that's a local guide that will then explain, here's the symbolism behind the things that you're seeing. or And then it gives you another perspective again and then right. that again horizons which it's really a great process yeah because for me it really tells me that we are always trying to connect with art and if we don't mm-hmm. have the cultural reference or we can't make up our mind what it means i mean for some yeah. people that also happens actually for me it sometimes happens with contemporary art you know i'm like mm-hmm. i don't know what the hell this is going on here so you know you kind of like <laughs> so you find you try to find yeah. something in this piece that connects you to it. And and sometimes it just comes down to techniques or uh, materials, I feel. And I think it is mm-hmm. always striving to to understand things if you're not like boxed in in something, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. I want to be in your suitcase as a little <laughs> camera and see all. Um, I cannot wait to hear. I also cannot wait to see what you will be probably then doing inspired by this trip. Um, let's see if there's something that will influence your uh, creative jumpstart video, which I cannot wait to see because you always come up with the best things. <laughs> oh, <crush> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I know you will be doing great. 
Thank you so, so much, Gwen, for this lovely interview. Uh, I'm, I hope people will check you out. Please go to her website, uh, follow her. She might be posting some things, you know, I don't know, probably not, but after the trip um, of what she has seen and some photos, I will live for them <laughs> next week. I wish you a great trip and see you, you soon, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.